In this lesson, we're going to talk about planning your database. Now, before you actually get started entering information into Access, it's very important to sit down with paper or with a whiteboard and to plan out your database. Whenever I build database projects for clients of mine, the first thing that I'd like to do is sit down with them and go over all the different aspects that the database is going to encompass. Whether it's a small database to track a few customers or a major database to run an entire company, this is a great first step. I like to sit down beforehand with a whole bunch of paper and to write out all the information that's going to go into the database and spread it all in front of me on a big table. That way I get a good overview of what this database is going to accomplish. Now the first thing to ask yourself is what kinds of information do you need to work with? What is this database going to be doing? Are we going to be tracking customer information? Are we going to be storing order history? Are we going to be doing inventory and product information? Try to figure out all the different types of information you plan on storing in your database up front. Once you know the different kinds of information you're going to be working with, we can start to make lists of tables. If you remember, tables will contain all of our data in the database. For example, we'll have a customer table to store information about our customers. We'll have a product table to store our list of products. We'll have an employees table to store information on our employees. So start to think about all of the different types of tables you think you'll need and what kinds of information will go into those tables. The information that goes into tables will be broken up into fields. A field is basically a specific type of data. For example, our customer table will have different fields such as name, address, phone number, and so on. Now you can break these fields up as much or as little as you want depending on your needs. Some of my customers, for example, are perfectly happy with a single name field but you may want to break it up into first name, middle initial, and last name. I recommend you break up your fields into as much detail as you ever think you're going to need. In addition to standard field types, like name and address, you may also want to consider what other kinds of information you may want to store about your customers. For example, how long has this person been a customer? Does this person receive our catalogs? And so on. All the different little bits of information that you want to store about your customers can be stored in your customer table in different types of fields. We'll see how these fields work in just a few minutes. For today's class, we're going to focus on one table, a customer table. And in this customer table, we're going to have some standard fields like first name and last name and address, and a couple of non-standard fields our focus for today is going to be building one single customer table, and then in future courses, we'll add more tables to our database. This is generally how a real database project starts. You build one or a few tables, and then your database grows from there. Take a minute now and write down some ideas for different fields that you think should be in a customer table. Another thing to take into consideration are the types of queries you'll need. If you recall from earlier, queries allow us to view the data in the tables in a different way. If we have a thousand customers in our database, we may want to be able to generate a query showing us all the customers only from New York. You should take a few minutes to figure out what kinds of queries you think you'll need before you begin building your database. What kinds of forms do you think you'll need? Remember, forms are a way of interacting with the database on the screen. Think of the skill level of your average user. Are the people in your office who are going to be using this database good with computers? If so, you can probably skip some corners. If not, you may need to take more time to build your forms so they're user friendly. And finally, it always helps to make a list of different types of reports you'll need. If you're doing a customer database, for example, you may need a report showing the customer credit limits. You may want a 
mailing list report or mailing labels like we're going to build in today's class. Take a few minutes and jot down the different types of reports you think you'll need. The more planning you do before building your database, the easier building your database will be.